Union of Social Workers, the Coalition of Labor Union Women, and the Labor Council for Latin American Advancement. Her fighting spirit is a driving force for her sisters and brothers in the labor movement. Maxine Dugan, sex worker since 1986, founded the Erotic Service Providers Union, ESPU. ESPU is a nonprofit which actively opposes oppressive, inaccurate legislation and advocates for the right of cons consensual adults to engage in erotic service exchange. ESPU seeks to create labor rights for sex workers through organizing, affiliating with the labor movement, and fighting for decriminalization of sex work. Maxine envisions safe and fair work conditions and equal protection under the law, as well as other occupational and social and economic rights. Founded in 2004 in San Francisco, ESPU has an advisory board of about a dozen diverse professionals from across the US who support Maxine's vision. As she says, nothing for us without us. in food service in North Carolina, I was regularly sexually harassed, had wages stolen, and was frequently discriminated against. I was even made to come to work the day following oral surgery, and much more. Because, of the, harassment, because the harassment was so frequent, I learned to normalize the experiences and became complacent. I left my job, moved to New York City, and became involved in the Retail Action Project, RAP. Organizing through RAP gave me back so much of the power I had lost, and although I never got justice for my former coworkers or for myself, I now have a renewed sense of the worth of my work and feel empowered to speak for my rights. and only relief operator at the Amage Water Authority, the AWA, presented me many obstacles, not only from management, but from my union brothers. When I first bid on the relief operator's position, I was told you neither have the brain nor the brawn to perform the job. Although I had the seniority and should have been awarded the position, the Amage Water Authority decided to lay me off instead. After 18 months of grievances, arbitrations, and prohibited practices hearings, they were forced to take me back. Needless to say, upon my return, life was a challenge. <coughs> Management hated me, and my male counterparts didn't want me there. <coughs> Information was not shared, and my male co-workers were responsible to train me. I was more or less left to fend for myself on a daily basis. I was set up for failure and pretty much left alone. But I studied on my own, paid attention, and within six months, I was ready to take the relief operator's test. For the test, I had to shut down the entire water authority plant manually and restart it also manually by pushing on a huge metal lever, using my entire body weight to move it inch by inch, while being watched by the entire time by the board of directors and the plant manager, all who were men. I succeeded and went on to become <laughs> I went on to become 
become the first and only woman relief operator at the end of the against a large number of the businessmen in our city. For over nine months, I would come home from school and walk the picket line with my family. It became very ugly and dangerous Scabs crossed the line, police were hiding in the rooms doing surveillance on the strikers and violence and vandalism toward the strikers. These people, these strikers, were my family. They stood strong together and they won. <laughs> of my mom holding over 10 checks of back pay that they won because they gave They paid the scabs more than what the employees were offered in their contract. Not until I joined the union myself did I realize how courageous and important that fight was. It gave them better opportunities and a better living conditions. But the, mo the most important thing that I realized was that they are my heroines. was a career woman and a very successful one but she had deep faith in my own capacity and said that she would support my educational goals whatever they might be and she did my name is Barbara Wertheimer I was born in 1925 and grew up in New York City I began my career in the labor movement after I graduated Oberlin College when I was offered a job with the Amalgamated Clothing Workers. I showed up there with my new husband, Val Wertheimer, and we were told we could share the job. Val worked for the Amalgamated his whole life, and in 1966 became vice president. We had two children, Ellen and David. After a year of organizing, I became Associate National Education Director of the Amalgamated and later Acting National Director. The education department was small when I started and I learned how important it is to hire and mentor talented people. In 1966, Lois Gray invited me to join the New York City Extension Program of the Cornell University School of Industrial and Labor Relations. Lois encouraged everyone who works there to develop ideas, so I began a special program for union women, Trade Union Women's Studies. This was around 1970, and women in labor unions were starting to ask questions. When we started the labor history course, I couldn't find a history book that talked about women. 
So I wrote my own. We were there, the story of working women in America. Every course attracted women who held various union roles, but women never had key leadership roles, and I began to wonder why. I went to the Ford Foundation and got a grant to study barriers to the participation of women in labor unions. The study found that women were held back by family responsibilities. We expected that, but there were other unexpected barriers that were just as strong. We found that women really wanted education, leadership training, to be more effective. They wanted it more than the men, more than the men did, and minority women wanted it most of all. I formed the Institute for Women and Work at Cornell, and with my talented staff, we created so many programs. We founded the regional summer schools for union women with women from UALE. We created a program to train minority women to become labor educators. We held conferences on specific issues that allowed women to meet each other, to learn to work with each other, and establish a network that will help them in the future. We created a library about and for union women. I love what I'm doing. It's constantly new, constantly challenging. Union women feel that it's their chance, and they want to have this opportunity for themselves. They learn from each other, appreciate each other, and help each other.
what part you were reading, okay? Oh, it doesn't have to be in order. Malika, you can start. I'm Malika Jirasi, and I spoke for Barbara Wertheimer. Nicoletta Green, IOTC Local One, Stage Hands Union, Maxine Dugan. I'm Melanie Dante from uh, SWAP USA and the Erotic Service Providers Union. I read about Rose Schneiderman this evening and presented the piece on Max Dugan. I'm Paulette Battisti, and I read for Paulette Battisti. <laughs> Catherine Kleeman, IOTC Local One, the Stagehands Union, and I read Pauline Newman. Michelle yeah. yeah. um, Chomham, Social Service Employees Union Local 371, and I read Sergio. Al Bradbury, Traveling Musicians Local 1000, and I read Elizabeth Gurley Flynn. Yeah. I'm Penny Estrada, AFSCME, Local 1758, and I read Mother Jones. <laughs> Zuleika Hamilton from the Center for Frontline Retail in New York, and I read my story. Cheryl Calderon, Social Service Employee, Loom Union, Local 371, and I read Yolanda Pumadeo. <laughs> I'm Ellie McGillis, and I'm out of uh, Local 1598 of Me, and I read uh, Sarah Backley, and I'm proud to say that my grandmother was one of the um, uh, low uh, workers that came down from Canada and worked alongside uh, of her brother and sister in the low uh, mills. from the Jamaica Household Workers Union, the Caribbean Domestic Workers Network, International Domestic Workers Federation, and I'm a proud student of Penn State University. And I read Agent Poole. I was also a domestic worker for 30 years. My name is Geeti Bora, and I'm from Philadelphia. Go in! Yeah. Twenty-one, eighty-six. I read for Jessica Govia. Yeah. I'm Robin Roach from District Council Thirty-Seven. Woo. and I'm from Retail Action Project, and I read for Lucy Parsons. I'm Crystal Shiflett, Ask Me, Council 13, uh, Local 1086, and I read myself. Thank you. 